My wife and I both got rejected by a lot of people before we landed in each other's laps. We did not let ego come into it. And that is the healthiest way to go about dating, is to remove ego from it and ask yourself, does this person make me happy? Do I want to explore this? Not, did he go out with a whole bunch of people that he thought he liked before he met me? Because the answer invariably is going to be yes. He got rejected by a whole bunch of people before he landed at you. But if he wants you, give him a chance to get you. You won't regret it. Ed, this is Evan Marquette, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, your personal trainer for love. Thanks for joining me on today's Love You podcast. We're talking about something really interesting today, something that I don't know if I've ever uh, written about before, uh, maybe once in my blog, and it's the concept of being someone's second choice. My theory is that everybody is someone's second choice. I'll get into the details and the weeds with that in one second. Before we do, just want to remind you that if you are high-achieving woman who's looking for love and is serious about it, I'll tell you how to apply to love you at the end of today's conversation. And if you enjoy the Love You podcast, please, at the end of this presentation, please go to Spotify, please go to Apple, leave us a positive review, tell a friend, leave a comment. It all adds up. Thank you for your time. Uh, Now, when I was in my late 20s, I got, this is true, it's really weird, I got passed around like a joint to three different women friends when I was dating online. Think the site was Jdate. I was definitely at a low point in my life. I was still me, same looks, basic personality. The difference was I was really unhappy. I had a dead-end job. I was struggling as a screenwriter. My father had passed away. I was living in Los Angeles, didn't have any close friends, was somewhere between depressed and anxious. It was a really, really rough time. And because I was lonely, I was doing a lot of dating. I was just trying to fill that void that, that couldn't be filled by work, couldn't be filled by friends. And I remember going on a date and, a, you know, maybe I followed up the next day to say, hey, I had fun. Could I see you again? She goes, you know what? I didn't feel like you were the right guy for me, but I've got a friend. And so she introduced me to her friend and I went out with her friend. And her friend said to me at the end of the date, I don't think you're right for me, but I've got a friend. I swear to God, I got passed from woman to woman to woman. And all of them ended up rejecting me. I share that story because rejection is normal. Uh, We take it personally. Um, I cite Don Miguel Ruiz, the author of The Four Agreements, who's one of his four agreements is don't take anything personally. Dating can feel very personal. It feels like an attack. It feels like someone is judging you when technically all they're saying is, I don't think you're the one person I could spend every day for the rest of my life with. It's a really high bar to jump. And that could be for any number of reasons, right? It could be an uh, attraction thing. It could be a chemistry thing. It could be a connection thing. It could be a, my perception is that we have different values thing. Values thing. There's a million very valid reasons that anyone could reject you, just as there's any a million valid reasons that you could reject a guy, and you do routinely. You pass up 95% of men online. Should they all feel terrible? Should they all feel rejected? Of course not. So we really need to differentiate between what, you know, what it means to be rejected. Uh, it doesn't have to be something that is inherently bad. I certainly in retrospect, was flattered that these women who didn't think I was right for them saw fit to pass me along to a friend, even though it all crapped out. But it mostly crapped out because I was in a really bad place in life, right? It wasn't anybody's fault. But to be to be passed along to a friend is, is, is a compliment. So uh, I've talked about this before. It's hard to see on a, on a podcast, but there's a Venn diagram, right? Two overlapping circles. And the definition of dating for everybody is all the people I like don't like me. And the other circle is all the people who like me, I don't like. And that is the definition of dating. That is the definition of being single for every man, every woman. All the people I want the most don't seem to be interested in me and all the people who want me, I'm not interested in what's wrong. And what's wrong is that we need to find some overlap between those two circles. The overlap between those two circles is a relationship. That's when someone you like likes you in return, right? But for the most part, dating is two non-overlapping 
circles. And that's not surprising. It is the most predictable thing in the world. That is the very nature of it. So we need to be less surprised at the fact that most people aren't your person. And in turn, not every guy is going to like you. Like if you have the right to reject 90, 95% of men, it stands to reason that men also have the equal right to do that in same proportions. And that's why dating is tricky. It's hard to find someone you feel a real connection with. So in my days of dating, and I don't have real statistics on this, but when I wrote one of my books, I remember counting the number of dates I've been on. Uh, I estimate that it's around 300. And based on my experience, and again, it could be a gut feel, it could be not entirely true. My guess is most of the women that I went out with were open to seeing me again, and I was more discriminating the way a lot of my clients are more discriminating, I was more discriminating and passed up more people. So my guess is out of 200, out of 300 dates, I probably, you know, uh, was said no to 250 and 50 of them said no to me. Now, again, there's no actual numbers on it. I share that only to make a point. Dating works both ways. There's a tremendous amount of rejection that you're going to give and there's a tremendous amount of rejection that you're going to do. But the one thing I did notice per my Venn diagram comment, was that the women I was the most excited about all rejected me, if not on the first date. And I've got some horror stories about people rejecting me right there on the first date. Good luck. I'm not that attracted to you, literally telling me that on the first date. (laughs) All right. So I had a whole bunch of that kind of rejection with people I was excited about. Similarly, uh, the women I fell in love with all rejected me too. That's why I was holding on to them. These are women that I put on some sort of pedestal. These are women that I claim to love who in three months, six months decided, nope, not my guy. Not enough attraction, not enough chemistry, uh, not enough confidence, not enough whatever. I mean, I, I could cite the very specific reasons that people passed on me. I remember my girlfriend when I was 31 thought I was too anxious because I was starting this new entrepreneurial career and I was kind of an in-between place and she didn't respond to my anxiety. Uh, Another one who is a personal trainer in New York uh, didn't feel enough chemistry with me to justify a long distance relationship. Uh, I've long talked about a girlfriend who I was crazy about and probably would have married who was very, very insecure and thought that I was going to cheat on her, even though I'm not wired that way. She had been cheated on and, and didn't like didn't like the fact that I was experienced or flirtatious and was always really threatened by that. So she dumped me a bunch of times. And so it was really painful to try to, you know, A, be a good person, be a prolific dater, never quit, persevere, walk the walk, treat everybody well, never lie, never cheat, and still get dumped. And I'm sure you could identify because most of my clients are good people. Right? I mean, that's a presumption is that you're a good person and things always go the wrong way. So that's not unusual either. Right? Like that story isn't unusual either. My wife's story isn't unusual. I share this because it may apply to you more than my story applies to you. My story was, you know, I was picky, picky, picky. I always found things wrong with people. Right. That may or may not have been fair or valid, but I did it anyway, passed on a lot of people, had a lot of options. But then when I was really, really cared for someone, always got my heart broken. My wife had a weakness for charismatic men. um, And as a result of her weakness for charismatic men, which probably came from the fact that she had a charismatic father, um, she ended up dating, I think, four consecutive cheaters, including her husband who cheated on her once. She took him back. He cheated on her again. That's brutal rejection, investing in the wrong person, being attracted to wrong things, all part of dating. Nothing we do here could wish that away. It's baked into the cake. No one could go into dating without expecting to get rejected. What distance teaches us, at least what distance has taught me, is that the person who got away isn't that great. I hope you guys have drawn that conclusion as well. When you look back on the one who got away or the ones who got away, and I told you about the girlfriends who rejected me and why they rejected me, but if I had snapped my fingers and I were married to those women who I was so crazy about who got away, this one is a little bit cold. This one wasn't really that good in bed. This one was highly insecure. This one was way too busy. This one was a little bit too masculine energy and not enough, not enough nurturing for me. Right. So I could look at all these women who I was genuinely, 
I wouldn't say in love with, it's for the wrong word, but I, I thought I loved at the time. And in retrospect, if I had gotten that person, I'd probably be unhappily married. So I want you to take a moment to consider all the guys who rejected you or hurt you or abandoned you. What was their fatal flaw? That if you got them, if you got your way, you actually wouldn't be happy. Please consider that because it's really important. And I'm giving you this in a larger context, which is to say that you didn't lose anything when you lose these people. All the people who reject you, all they're telling you is, I'm not your person. You may want me to be this person. You may try to shoehorn this in. You might engage in wishful thinking. He doesn't understand. I'm the best thing that ever happened. We have something so special. But his willingness to let you go is his fatal flaw. This is the premise of my, my book, Why He Disappeared. All that said, everybody compromises in relationships. Everybody does. Anybody who tells you they don't compromise in relationships is lying to you. And I don't know anybody, any reasonably married couple who talks about it. Compromise is the thing that makes relationships work. And so when you're making a compromise, you're compromising your way into happiness. So my wife compromised because I'm Jewish. She was not planning on that after 16 years of Catholic school. She made a compromise. I made a compromise. I wanted to have two kids. I married a woman three years older than me, right? We had a lot of pregnancy complications, two miscarriages, two chemical pregnancies, a fibroid surgery, right? Got lucky to have healthy kids naturally. Um, my wife was 41 and a month or two before she turned 43, that was a compromise. It's very possible. I could I, I might not have ended up with a family by choosing a woman who was three years older than me in my mid-30s. We both compromise. We both feel we won. And of course, there's the personality compromises. My wife is very stubborn and yet passive. That's the way she'll describe herself. The most, <laughs> the most stubborn, passive person you'll ever meet. Um, she tends not to traffic in personal growth or change. If something's broken, she's going to say, this is just the way I am. Even if she's unhappy, this is just the way I am. I'm not going to read a self-help book. I'm not going to go to a psychologist. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to double down on what's not working. And I'm the polar opposite. Because of that, I'm very critical. I'm critical of myself, right? And I am pretty good at seeing what's not working and trying to come up with a fix for it. And that is really annoying to be married to. I could assure you it's really annoying to be, be really annoying to be married to a guy who is a professional advice giver. So we, among other things, compromise on those things. So everybody compromises for the sake of a relationship. You're not going to be the first person to not compromise. But the important thing to know, and this is a key component of Love You, is that you compromise your way into happiness. All these compromises are in service of a relationship that makes me happy. I didn't compromise way, my way into misery. There are things that annoy my wife uh, that annoy my wife about me. There are things that annoy me about my wife, but there's no point in time wherever we, we ever think we'd be better off without each other or we'd be better off with someone else. We've compromised our way into happiness. So when I say compromise and you hear Evan's telling me to settle, no, 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 I'm certainly not. Right? You've largely been settling on the wrong qualities for most of your life. You've been settling on men who are not communicative. You've been settling on men who are verbally abusive. You've been settling on men who are not sensitive to your feelings. You're settling on men who are not emotionally available. You're settling on men who are dismissive of your opinions, and not sensitive to your emotional cues. You're, set, you're settled on men who have addiction problems, honesty problems, money problems. That's settling, right? But everybody's got some stuff that they compromise on and you compromise your way into happiness and you settle your way into misery. No dating coach worth, worth their salt will ever tell you to settle your way into misery. We will all tell you to compromise your way into happiness. And that brings us to the moment of truth. Everyone is someone's second choice. And so I told all these stories of rejection of the 50 women who rejected me online, which is, says nothing about the Hundreds, if not thousands of women I wrote to in 10 years of online dating. Right? I'm good at this. And I got rejected more times than I could possibly count. More times than you've ever been rejected. Right? I've written to more women and had no response, silence, block, whatever. I know rejection really, really well. That's par for the course. So when I say everyone is someone's second choice, that's not an exaggeration. All those girlfriends that I love rejected me. That's 
a fact and then someone else is taking me off of the scrap heap and saying, you're good enough for me. My wife got rejected, cheated on by a number of men who thought they could do better than her, these men who cheated on her. It was their loss, was my gain. They cast her aside, she landed with me. We're both lots of other people's cast-offs. This is the very, very nature of dating. It's not surprising, right? When you look at it through this lens, it's the most utterly predictable thing in the world. It would be shocking if you went online and the first person you wrote to was your soulmate and you never had to go on more than one first date. So everybody rejects everybody, leaving us all hurting and fragile and confused and frustrated and insecure. And then you find someone who says, you're good enough. Not only are you good enough, you're great. And I know what your flaws are, and I'm going to ignore them right, to be with you. And you're going to ignore my flaws or put up with them to be with me, knowing full well that before here, both of us had our share of heartbreak. Everybody is someone's second choice or third choice or fourth choice or fifth choice. So we got to remove ego from it. There is ego in dating. It feels really personal, but we have to put ego aside for this one very specific use case, which may or may not have happened to you, but I talked about the top of the call about me being passed around. I don't believe in recycling old relationships. I've talked about it on a previous podcast. Right? I don't believe in exes breaking up, making up, breaking up, making up, and lasting. It happens occasionally, but for the most part, if, it's, if you break up, it's, the relationship is broken. But in online dating, when it's just a big carousel, a big revolving doors, and you're texting, email, phone conversation, first date with a number of people simultaneously, and this just happened on a coaching call last night, which is why I'm present to it, why I'm sharing it with you today. Let's say you and I were going out and you tell me, Evan, and we only met on one date. Evan, I went on a third date with another guy. We have something that I have to explore. I can't see you anymore, but I have to see where this leads me. I would say, I completely understand. Good luck to you. Knowing full well, because I'm experienced, that that relationship's probably not going to last because most relationships don't last. Statistically, most relationships don't last. So my prediction is that woman is going to go out with that guy who she says she has stronger feelings for. A month later, that's going to implode. And she's going to come back to me and say, hey, Evan, that thing didn't work out with that guy. Could we, could we pick this up again? The answer to that question is hell yeah. It is not, how dare you? I mean, you chose some other guy over me. I, I'm nobody's like, I'm nobody's like second choice. I'm nobody's sloppy seconds. I'm no, I'm nobody's safety school. What the hell are you talking about? If I liked you on the one date we were on and you came back to me and we didn't go too far down that road, we don't even know if we're compatible. We couldn't possibly tell. Why would I let my ego get in the way of going out with you who I like? That's all it is, is ego. So. Flip that around and ask yourself if you do the same thing. If a guy told you, because this happened to me last night, hey, I feel a real strong connection with someone else. I need to explore that. No hard feelings. And that guy came back to you. And again, it's not like he was your boyfriend. It's not like you dated for five months, right? It was a guy that you were texting. Maybe you met him. Maybe you didn't. If that guy comes back and you reject him because you're nobody's second choice, you're making a huge mistake. You could be passing up on your soulmate out of ego, thin-skinned ego. How dare he? Well, I'm telling you, my wife and I both got rejected by a lot of people before we landed in each other's laps. We did not let ego come into it, All right? And that is the healthiest way to go about dating is to remove ego from it and ask yourself, does this person make me happy? Do I want to explore this? Not, did he go out with a whole bunch of people that he thought he liked before he met me? Because the answer invariably is going to be yes. He got rejected by a whole bunch of people before he landed at you. But if he wants you, give him a chance to get you. You won't regret it. My name is Evan Mark Katz. This is the Love You Podcast. Thank you for listening to my hot take today, which I'm not sure uh, you'll 
here anywhere else in the world. Um, if you enjoyed today's podcast, please leave us a positive review on Apple or Spotify in particular, and uh, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Finally, if you are a high achieving woman and you struggle with dating relationships, men, online dating, confidence, trusting your own judgment, go to evanmarkatz.com forward slash apply. Watch a short video on how to understand men and fix your broken man picker. And maybe, just maybe, we could turn your love life around once and for all and get you into the unconditionally loving relationship that you've always sought. Thank you for your time. I'll see you here next week. Bye-bye.